Hi children, I hope you're doing well today. I have a little show and tell. This is my pumpkin. I made it at our pumpkin painting day and I love seeing your pumpkins on pumpkin painting day. You did a great job. And this was mine. I have a little moon stars and then I have a little jack-o'-lantern smiley face. And uh, I wonder what maybe some of the other pumpkins you have at home, right? You might have had some that are carved, some other ones that are painted. And it's a wonderful part of this season to be able to decorate and celebrate the harvest, right? Which we've talked about before. Well, today I wanted to share with you a parable of the pumpkin. And we've talked about parables before, right? Can you say the word parable? Great job. So a parable is just a lesson um, inside of a story, kind of hidden in there, right? Okay, so here is the parable of the pumpkin. I've shared it with some of our Sunday school children, but if you haven't seen it, I would love to share it with you now. All right, did you know that Christians are like pumpkins? God picks you up from the patch, brings you in, and washes off all the dirt. Then he pulls out the top, and scoops out all the yucky stuff. God removes all the seeds of doubt, hate, and sin. And then God carves a new smiling face and puts God's light inside of you to shine for all the world to see, right? So when you carve a pumpkin, this one's painted, but when you carve it, the light comes out, right? Let your light shine for Jesus. So this was the little parable of the pumpkin. I hoped you liked it. It uh, it really does remind us that, um, you know, God shines his light from us and it doesn't depend on what we do. And uh, we can sometimes have, you know, seeds inside that God needs to take out, right? Mistakes or um, sins, but that God still shows his light through us and through our smile. And uh, we can share that with the world, even if we're just a tiny little pumpkin like this, right? <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you remember that uh, in the rest of this fun Halloween season, um, each pumpkin can be a good reminder of how God transforms us and uses us for his good. Well, happy Halloween. I hope you have a healthy, happy, and safe time. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you, children. Bye. Today we'll be dipping again into this wonderful book, Devotional Classics. Here we are exploring Francois Fenelon's section again. And uh, here he talks about a will that is no longer divided. And also in the second section, uh, So Desirable a State. So when he says they in the beginning of this first paragraph, he's talking about those who truly throw themselves into prayer, into devotion. Okay, let's dive in. They sacrifice themselves, but to what they love most. They suffer, but they want to suffer, and they prefer the suffering to every false joy. Their bodies endure sharp pain, their imagination is troubled, their spirit droops in weakness and exhaustion, but their will is firm and quiet in their deepest and most intimate self. What God asks of us is a will which is no longer divided between him and any creature. It is a will pliant in his hands, which neither seeks nor rejects anything. With, which wants without reserve whatever he wants, which never wants under any pretext anything which he does not want. When we are in this disposition, all is well, and the most idle amusements turn to good works. Happy are they who give themselves to God. They are delivered from their passions, from the judgments of others, from their malice, from their tyranny of their sayings, from their cold and wretched mocking, from the misfortunes which the world distributes to wealth, from the unfaithfulness and inconstancy of friends, from the wiles and snares of the enemy, from our own weakness, from the misery and brevity of life, from the horrors of a profane death, from the cruel remorse attached to wicked pleasures, and in the end, from the eternal condemnation of God, we are delivered from this countless mass of evils 
because placing our will entirely in the hands of God, we want only what God wants, and thus we find his consolation in faith, and consequently hope in the midst of all sufferings. What weakness it would be then to fear to give ourselves to God and to undertake too soon so desirable a state. Thanks for joining me. I think, you know, some of his language is really intense or even a little scary, but I think he makes a great point, right? Um, That there's so many things that we don't think about that we are delivered from. A lot of the miseries of life when we give over our will to God, right? And we focus on the wonderful love and grace that is showered over us at all times. So thank you so much for joining me. He's a great writer. Again, that's Francois Fenelon. And uh, looking forward to next time. Thanks so much. Bye. Good evening, friends. Tonight, I invite you to join me as we travel once again to the Isle of Iona in Scotland and uh, worship using uh, many of the prayers that is used in that community. In the beginning, when it was very dark, God said, let there be light. And there was light. In the beginning, when it was very quiet, the word was with God. And what God was, the word was. When the time was right, God sent the Son. He came among us. He was one of us. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who are the way, the truth, and the life, Do not let us wander from you who are the way, nor distrust you who are the truth, nor rest in any other than you who are the life. Teach us what to do, what to believe, and wherein to take our rest. We ask it in your own name's sake. Amen. And now please join me in our prayer for concern and for others. The petitions that I make will be followed by a brief period of silent meditation. Let us say a prayer for those who need to be remembered tonight. For those who have made the news headlines today because of what they have done or what they have said. For those who have been brought to our attention today through a meeting or a conversation. For those who we know who will have difficulty coping with themselves today. for those who are in hospital and those who are caring for them, for those who are in a place which is strange to them. For those who are agonizing over a decision they have to make, For those in whose family or a marriage or close relationship there is a stress or a breakup. For those the words peace and justice bring to mind.
for any other special person or situation. For those who share our work, our mission, our ministry, and our vision. and even for ourselves. Amen. Now let us thank God for the good things of this day and other days through which we are and have been blessed. For news which is good, or information which is promising. For a word spoken to us today, which we want to keep in our minds. For people who have come to our home, spoken on the phone, sent us a text or an email, or been brought to our attention. For those we want to be close to despite the distance between us. For a word from God, a glimpse of God, which is important at this time in our lives. For those who shape our vision and share our purpose. And most of all, for Jesus Christ, who has come to stay and to summon us today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Now may our God of peace enable us in every kind of goodness, working in us what is pleasing through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God of life be ours. The blessing of the loving Christ be ours. The blessing of the Holy Spirit be ours. To cherish us, to help us, to make us holy. Amen and amen. Good night, friends. <laughs>